Good morning and welcome again to Wayside Kids on our wonderful YouTube channel. Again, if you haven't subscribed to it, please do so. That way you receive our notifications for any time we put up a new video. I'm Miss Sonia and we are going to continue with a little Thanksgiving series about gratitude. But today, we are going to focus on a word and that word is endurance. Endurance. I'm sure some of you have heard it, especially any of those kids that do any sports. Endurance. So we're going to explore what that means a little further with today's lesson. So let's get started, okay? Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. These are great words. In fact, they are words of a song that we can hear on the radio. But the amazing thing is, is that these words have been used in songs to praise God for thousands of years. About 3,000 years ago, a man named David, do you remember David? We talked about him. King David of Israel wrote these words down in order to praise God with them. David also wrote these words, I will praise God's name in song and glorify him with thanksgiving. Praising God means saying things to God that are true about him. When we say things like, God is good, that is praising God because God is good. We might say things like, God is loving or God is always there. And that is praising God because those things are true about God. God is loving and God is always there. What are some other things we could say to praise God? What kinds of things can we say that are true about God? Take some time to think about that. God never turns his back on me. God is always listening. God is my friend. Those are a few things that I think of that I know are absolutely true about God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. That's a new word, endure. Endure means that something lasts or bears with other things. It means that it doesn't go away, no matter what. So God's love lasts forever. It will bear all other things forever. It will be there forever. Endure. The Bible says that we are to give thanks to God. We are to give thanks to God because he is good and God is good, isn't he? So let's talk about some of the ways that we know God is good. We know God is good because he gives us good things. In the book of James, there's a verse, verse 17 in chapter 1, where it says, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father. Let's name some of the good things that God gives us or has given us. A few of you might think something along the lines of mom and dad, food, your house, grandparents, pets, the sun, the moon, the stars, animals, any of the pets that you have at home. It could be a goldfish, a dog. I know for me, um, we have chickens as well. So those, I mean, they give us food, eggs, awesome. Some of us might even dig a little bit deeper and say that we're going to be thankful for the fact that God has given and provided us love, justice, kindness, peace, joy, salvation through his son, Jesus Christ. And you know what? What holiday is coming? Thanksgiving. So when we celebrate this holiday of Thanksgiving, we are setting aside a day to thank God for all of those good things. Remember the big things and the small things. We can thank him for things as simple as our pets, right? Or as big and wonderful as our salvation. We can thank him for anything good that we have received because the Bible tells us that he has given us every good and perfect gift. Remember, King David wrote, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. One of the ways we can give thanks to God is to pray. So let's pray and thank God for all the good things that he has given us. All right, let's bow our heads. Dear God, Thank you for all the good and perfect gifts you have given us. We praise you for how good and loving you are. Help us to make every day a day of thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Awesome. Good stuff. So for today, the activity that I want you to do is a little tricky and it might be a little loud, so I apologize. But you are going to make a cornucopia and I don't know if you've ever done it before or maybe if you have, maybe you've never done it like this. But it's going to be your thankfulness cornucopia. And what you're going to need is it's most preferred that you get a big brown paper bag, like grocery style, okay? Um, and for this, I'm going to start it to show you the directions, but then I'm going to show you my final product, okay? So, to get started, mine has handles, so I suggest that you remove the handles from it um, because they might just get a little bit in the way. And parents, you're going to want some scissors and they're definitely going to want to help the kids out with this. But again, this is a family project, a group project. So you can all do this and participate in it. So you're going to need a brown paper bag to get your cornucopia started. And a cornucopia is something that we see a lot um, during Thanksgiving. Sometimes it's a table setting. Sometimes you might see it in images that are um, depicted for Thanksgiving. And it is meant to... Um, to put things inside of it that are bountiful or abundant. Uh, typically when you see it, you see food inside of it, which is, you know, ironic because at Thanksgiving, what do we do? We, we eat food. But you can certainly put other things in it um, that you are thankful for. And that's kind of what we're going to do today. So to get started, I need parents to stick their hands inside that bag. I'm sorry, it's noisy. And kind of give yourself a peek, a peek at the top and just put a nice little slit in it, right in the middle, okay? So you're going to create a T shape and cut to the ends on all sides. And like I said, I'm gonna show you this and then I'm gonna show you my final product on one that I've already um, completed, okay? So it's open as so. Now, stick your hand back inside that bag, and where the corners are, you're actually going to want to kind of invert it. So, fold them in the other way, and like I said, it might not look pretty, and that's okay, it's not meant to, but this is just so we can sort of get it to relax a little bit more to make that cone shape. All right. So all my corners are inverted. I'm talking a little louder than usual just because I know it's loud playing with a plastic or a paper bag. <laughs> all right, so kind of group this all together in your hands. And get some rubber bands handy. You're gonna take the ends and you're going to start to twist it. And like I said, this gets loud. So start small and then twist tighter as you work to the base of the bag. You can use one rubber band, um, but feel free to use more than one if you feel like it'll help hold the end or the um, horn of the cornucopia, I guess you could say. Okay. So it's going to look something like that as you're twisting it, all right? So that I'm gonna switch over to my other one only because this took a little bit of time. So I have it twisted. This is the end of my cornucopia, okay? And then what you do on the other end is, after I took off my handles, is you're gonna to wanna to roll the edges down. Roll it down. At least once or twice, just to get a nice solid looking um, trim to it, okay? And then after that, you kind of twist it into the shape that you want it to be. And I, again, I know it's not going to look pretty. It's not like a nice wicker weave basket that a cornucopia might actually look on your table. But the whole point is, again, family project. And here we are. We have what is meant to resemble our cornucopia. You can certainly decorate this to make it look a little nicer, prettier. Maybe take a marker, give it some definition. If somebody is really creative and wants to give that a try. But the whole point is, what you're going to do now is add to it 
things that you are thankful for, things that are abundant in your life. Now, my kids automatically, after we looked at some pictures together, wanted to do exactly what it is that you would see it be, and that is to put food in it. And as you can see, we have fake plastic kitchen food. So I'm adding a carrot because these are things that they had picked and an egg and celery and let's see what else we got and a donut a donut why would i want to put a donut in here so let's see what else do we have cheese cookies and pizza all right so these are the things that my kids wanted to add you can certainly do something similar if you don't have fake food, you could definitely um, color and cut some stuff out. But you know what else? You can go a step further. Maybe you want to add in here um, a photo of your family or maybe you want to put in a heart because we all have an abundance of love, love for our family and love from God. So it doesn't just have to be food like you would find in a cornucopia. Okay, everybody, I hope that you have fun making your own thankfulness cornucopia at home today. I'd love to see the final product. Um, again, enjoy your day, and we will meet again next week for the last segment of, you know, what it is to be thankful for this month of November. All right, I'm Miss Sonia. 